I would encourage people to go to my website, which is thenowword.com, just simply thenowword.com, and and you can read it. But I'll, I'll touch on it li lightly. Is that there? There are basically, um, I guess, two main points that people are making is that there was interference by this group called the St. Gallen Mafia, as they called themselves. They were a group of, of cardinals, among whom Cardinal Godfrey Daniel, Daniels was one of them. And they were openly wanting uh, Cardinal Jörg Borgoglio, who is now Pope Francis, to be the man. They wanted him as the pope. Uh, I don't see any problem with a cardinal wanting a certain man to be a pope. Of course they do. They wouldn't go into a conclave and vote for somebody unless they actually wanted that person. So, and that's their obligation and their duty. Now, what they're not allowed to do is actually interfere in an election. And so far, everything's anecdotal. And, and so I address that. I would like people to go and just simply read what has been said there. Not a single, single card. Now, I will just say this, that mafia, that, that St. Gallen group was active during the election of Cardinal Ratzinger to the Pope. And afterward, they disbanded. So it's a bit of a head scratcher why people are saying, well, you know, these people interfered with Pope Francis's election when the group actually kind of disbanded their goals. If any election was invalid, it would have been Benedict the 16th. But here's the point. Not a single cardinal in the world has even so much as hinted that either Benedict the 16th election or Pope Francis's election was invalid. And, and that's absolutely key. So everything else from this point is is mere speculation. Uh, and the fact that these guys wanted Pope Francis, they said he's he's their pope. It, you know, Freemasons have come out and said, we'd like him to be the pope. Well, that's all kind of disturbing. I, I agree. But it doesn't change the fact that it was a valid election. And the second point in my article, uh, Ron, is I go into the resignation of Pope Benedict. And people are saying that Pope Benedict... Uh, in his Latin, when he resigned, he just said that I'm resigning from the ministry, the ministerium of Bishop of Rome, but not the munis, which is the office of the Bishop of Rome. He didn't specifically say that. And uh, so they're making the argument that Pope Benedict was kind of saying because he's still wearing white and he's called Pope Emeritus and so on, and he kept his name, Benedict the Sixteenth, that that he's kind of carrying on the ministry of Peter in, in some sort of official capacity while Pope Francis carries on the other aspect of the ministry. And, uh, but that argument, as, as you'll read in the article, several cardinals and theologians come out and say, well, it just simply doesn't hold water. You have to look not at what Pope Benedict might have meant, but what were his clear actions? And his clear action uh, 10 days or eight days before he resigned was clearly that he said, I'm resigning as Bishop of Rome. And he said this, I quote, this is important. The see of St. Peter will be vacant. He didn't say partially vacant, mm -hmm. somewhat vacant. He said it will be vacant and a conclave to elect the new Supreme Pontiff will have to be convoked by those with competence to do it. Since then, and you'll read in the article, Pope Benedict uh, has kind of gone after, in the sense, people who keep saying his resignation is not valid. He, he said, um, there's absolutely no doubt, he said, regarding the validity of my resignation from the Petrine ministry. The only condition for it, its validity, he said, was my complete freedom, which is what canon law says. He, he says in that in that quote, my last and final job is to support Pope Francis pontificate with prayer. So here's the point I want to make. Is some are saying, well, Pope Benedict is still the Pope, and he knew that. He stepped, and this is the point of the article. There's an editorial out there saying he kind of knew this. He steps aside purposely to allow a false prophet a false pope, rather, and a false church to emerge so that we would clearly see the weeds from the wheat. The problem with that theory, though, and it's a big one, is you're essentially saying that when Pope, when Francis, Pope Francis is calling is Francis calling. the Pope, and he is, and he's embracing him, as you see in that picture you showed recent, uh, just a moment ago, mm -hmm. the, is the, is, what they're saying then is that the Pope 
uh, Benedict the 16th is lying to us because if Francis is an anti-pope, if he's not the legitimate successor to the throne of Peter and he's an anti-pope, well, how irresponsible would it be for Benedict to basically say to the church, I'm praying for this man and I, I'm throwing my, my prayer and my support behind an anti-pope. I mean, that that's insane to say something like that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if the pope knowingly stepped aside, holding on as the pope, knowing that he would create a situation where you have an anti-pope, how grave is that to lead a billion Catholics, lead them into a, a situation where they're giving their assent to Francis as the pope, when really they should be giving it to him or partially to him or something. So you can see, I, I think, mm -hmm. Christopher, you can see the problems with this are huge because uh, an anti-pope is a serious thing because he doesn't have the keys of the kingdom and he's not protected by the charism of infallibility that Jesus left the church and, and as we know from church teaching, is given to Peter in limited circumstances. That's right. I think one thing I would add, Mark, if, if you could comment on it, I'm not sure, I haven't read the article yet, but um, something I've heard from others is how Pope Francis has allegedly thrown out the title Vicar of Christ. Now, I don't know if he actually did that. I've, I've heard that he's done that. And many people will talk about that, that he has gotten rid of, quote unquote, the, the title of Vicar of Christ. Like, right. have you heard that? Can you speak to that at all? By chance? Well, it was it was in the yearbook of the Vatican, and it was a few years back. I can't remember the year where where the title was changed to Bishop of Rome, and people said, "Well, he's throwing out the title of Vicar of Christ." I, I if I'm not mistaken, now don't quote me on this. I believe the title still appears, but it's not in the prominent place that it was. Now, does this mean that that Pope Francis believes he's not the Vicar of Christ? You know what? That uh, you you sure. couldn't you wouldn't know unless you asked the man. Uh, sure. I mean, Sure. Who made the change? I mean, he must have authorized the change. That's what we can assume. But I, I'm not going to tell you right now, Christopher, there's so much going on in the Vatican that even Cardinal Mueller, who was the prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith and let go by Pope Francis, himself said he believes the Pope is surrounded by, uh, according to a journalist quoting Cardinal Mueller, by spies. Uh, men who tell the Pope what, what mm -hmm. they want him to hear, not what he should hear and what he needs to hear. And so this is why we have to be so careful, I think, about just every time something scandalous happens. And there's there's been a lot of scandalous things, frankly, from the Vatican, including the press office, who doesn't clear up a lot of the mess no. like they did for Benedict and John Paul II, which is a, right. which is a tragedy. It's a scandal that they don't. There's so much funky stuff going on there that, you know, you have to really be careful about blaming Pope Francis. Let me give you a case in point. Mm -hmm. When asked by a journalist on a plane a year after that comment by Pope Francis, where he said, remember, he said, who am I to judge? <laughs> and he was referring to a priest who was who was I think had left the homosexual lifestyle, was trying to renovate himself. And, and the Pope said of him, who am I to judge? Well, those comments exploded. T-shirts were printed. People in the gay lobby used it to say, you know, the Pope is saying, don't judge me, you know. So a year later, he was asked by a journalist, well, what do you think of all the controversy you caused by those comments? And the Pope said, what controversy? He, he, he wasn't tuned into what was going mm -hmm. on. And, and I'm not surprised because I read an article where the Pope said he doesn't go to the Internet. He's not on the Internet. He doesn't watch TV. He only reads one newspaper and he likes to watch old movies. I mean, this this is a pope who is he, he, he's not exposing him to self to what's going. He, everybody thinks he reads Life Site News or Remnant TV, watches it every day. He doesn't. <laughs> now, I'm not saying the pope sh the pope has an obligation, I think, to be informed. I mean, we're all called to watch and pray. So, uh, you know, maybe there's an element, some would say, of incompetence mm -hmm. here in terms of not understanding what's going on in the general body of Christ, because these I things are a big things. deal. I mean, when, when Scarfali, that journalist, published um, a, an article saying that the Pope denied the existence of hell, that's a big deal. you got to clear that the, up. Yeah, it, yeah, this has to be cleared up. Is the Pope not aware that he's – he must be aware because he gave the interview – but where are the safeguards here where he's, you know, people are editing him and, and helping him because mm -hmm. every word that comes out of his mouth can be used for good or for bad. And so we really do have a genuine crisis right now where we have a, a pope who's not properly edited, who's being uh, falsely edited, uh, misinterpreted. 
And, and part of the blame has to go right up to the Vatican, if not the Pope himself. If I can say with respect for the Holy Father, you have to watch as to what is going on because it's, there's, there's, there's a great abuse. And one of the things right now is the suggestion that you're not even the Pope. So, boy, I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on in our church, a lot of controversy. And, and um, I just hear St. Paul saying, strive to be a one mind, strive for unity. And I, as I said in my article, Ron, we could have a pope that fathers children, that appoints Judas to be one of the in the conclave, that appoints the devil himself to the conclave, or to be a cardinal, a pope who dances naked on the Vatican walls. I mean, he might do all these things, and they'll be scandalous, and they'll cause sorrow and grief, but that doesn't mean he's no longer the pope. And and that's what Benedict the Sixteenth said is that. Peter is both a rock and a stumbling stone at times cool. in church history.